Uh, I'm hoping that after this channel, uh, webinar, because it's online, so we will understand that how we can actually we will uh, try to know that what, how we can define this object Twitter, what are they actually, and how they are going to actually uh, made up. So, of course, to make a soft actuator, or sometimes we are also calling it uh, these the smart actuator, we require some smart materials. So, we will also going to have a look about the understanding how we are going to define the smart materials, particularly using soft robotics. And also, uh, uh, not in detail, but at least uh, we will try to understand that uh, how we can applicate or design a basic. Uh, a smart material based soft actuator. So, a little bit, uh, it's although it's online, but I'll try to actually uh, provide you some fundamental steps or fundamental design procedure how we can fabricate or lab smart actuator uh, based on dielectric elastomeric materials. So, now we have uh, to go the first objective of this talk, so which is nothing but the uh, uh, information about. Uh, what is a soft actuator and what are the smart material uh, we are going to use in soft robotics. So, before uh, moving ahead, uh, first we have to understand that what soft robotics and how it is going to differentiate between, already we have heard about the, uh, means this word in robotics, but particularly here in this talk we are talking about soft robotics. So, how this soft robotics is uh, different from the conventional type of robotics, or we can say that it's not a, uh, we can say that a major difference, but a specific difference, uh, we are talking about the particular type of material uh, distinction, so that's why we are distinguishing uh, the soft robotic fields from the conventionally known uh, robotic field. In the uni uh, you can say that in our scenario. So now, uh, before moving ahead, let's talk about what are the major technological revolution we have right now from our uh, history perspective. So let's uh, try to summarize uh, in a very uh, summarized sense what are the major technological revolution we have faced as a human being. So if you are trying to uh, actually uh, Categorize that. So we can categorize these revolution, or we can say that human revolution in three major categories. The first revolution uh, we have named it as industrial revolution, which happened actually uh, uh, we can say that it may happen in between in general 1760 to 1840. And we can say that in this uh, first revolution, uh, which is uh, termed as industrial revolution, so these are innovation happens related to the automation. We can we can see here the pictures in mass production of their so, so when Indians have been uh, invented, uh, we can say that uh, uh, real Indians and so many other types of Indians also had been invented in this type of the first human revolution. <laughs> industrial. Now, moving uh, to the second human revolution, which uh, is termed as the information revolution. So, in general, we can say that uh, this uh, type of revolution we have, uh, we have seen uh, in the phase of 1942 to This is not uh, the this year we are not writing a uh, hard and fast uh, but we are just uh, writing in a very, I mean, uh, in generic way. So, we have seen this type of revolution, uh, basically the information, so many information technology has been involved, like uh, internet, free flow of information, data and intelligent use of data, how we can utilize the data, okay, how can it flow the information from one place to another, very faster sense. So, where you can say that initially uh, we were having so many, means big size computers, and later on, already we are having a uh, very small size, even though right now we are having a long size, uh, long size of uh, computer we have already built. So, now, so coming to the last, the third human revolution, uh, which uh, we are calling uh, as uh, the intelligence revolution. So, particularly <coughs> compared to the previous human revolution, particularly we are focusing on the, this word you can say the intelligence. Intelligence includes the smartness or is uh, in this revolution, we are not particularly talking about the different uh, types of machine development. 
but we are more or less we are talking about uh, whatever the machine we are having, how we can enhance the performance. Or particularly we can say that uh, we are making the existing machine whatever we are having to make it smart. Or we can say that how the performance we can take uh, means higher and higher, whatever that means uh, in the existing machine. So we are trying to actually uh, make the efficiency. Uh, <laughs> So of course, uh, to do this, particularly we are uh, actually trying to involve uh, the current technology that still means currently we are uh, seeing in our scenario like machine uh, means data uh, means machine learning data science data analytics and so many types of robotics also is going to involve here. So here we can see here so many pictures, but few pictures are uh, actually. Uh, Copyrighted, so it is written copyrighted reserved. Okay, so right now, uh, just like uh, we can see here, few pictures uh, that uh, we are having some robots. So we have made, even though in the second revolution we have uh, made the robot, but in the third revolution we are trying to upgrade the existing robots uh, in the level of we can say that even though means even the robot can play with us, even the chess. Or we are trying to develop the robot in that level, he can actually interact with a human being just like human beings are interacting with So in that way we are trying to upgrade whatever we are having, whatever our forefather scientists have developed. So moving to, uh, so always we are talking about, we can say that we are also living in the third scenario, uh, human revolution, right now it is undergoing. So, uh, Always we are thinking about the upgrade because uh, if we are I mean, as a scientist, as an engineer, always we have to think about the upgrade. We cannot stop. Okay, so we have to think about the uh, upgrade. So based on the invented technology, uh, it's maybe in the previous scenario we are not having, but if we are inventing few new novel technology, so we are trying to utilize these novel technology. In the existing machine, how in that way we are operating the machine. So now, now let's talk about the soft robotics. Uh, uh, why particularly I am focusing this word soft robotics? So let me uh, take uh, the example how we can distinguish this uh, soft robotics with uh, uh, conventionally no uh, major, I mean, conventionally no uh, field of robotics. So already, uh, let me tell you what is the major motivation. Uh, of using or use putting more attention towards the soft uh, soft robotics. So here the uh, means concern uh, what is the soft and why soft? We are talking about that. Uh, let me give you a simple example to understand that. So let's try to take uh, let's uh, let's take very simple uh, situation. That, uh, let's say we are having a baby and we want to purchase a toy for him or her. So, what, what is the priority? So, whenever we are going to market, uh, whenever we are uh, means uh, always uh, we are talking. Whenever we are talking to the shopkeeper, we are trying to say that please uh, show us the uh, means twice uh, made up of soft material. So why it is so? Because always whenever we are talking about this, we have to put our attention towards the human safety, human interaction. So in that way we are thinking that okay whenever we are going to interact with the machine or with the and the device itself. So that baby should not be harmed. Human interaction or you can say that safety is the major issue or major concern we are focusing at this time. So in that way, suppose uh, we have taken a toy made of uh, something, uh, we can say that uh, made of uh, hard material based or like conventional metallic based uh, toy. So if we are having baby, let's say six months or one year, so that conventional material based robot can harm him or her. So in that way we can think that, okay, why this soft material is playing a major role in our Day to day life also. So now, recent time already we have developed so many robots, and in uh, means positively we are also going to interact. But right now, anyhow, sometimes it may happens that uh, this interaction should be safe. So we are enhancing our interaction with the machine. Uh, 
we are enhancing uh, our interaction day by day. So in that case, we have to concern the human safety at, the, at, the, at that time. So in that, we can say that uh, activity is human interaction. Slowly, slowly, we are shifting uh, the materials. Uh, we can say that we are changing the robot material from hard material based robot to the soft material based. And, and also, let me tell you what is the base uh, means, uh, motivation we can also have. That if we are seeing our body, means just like I mean, if you are thinking about what is the ultimate object of the robot. So, the ultimate object of the robot is nothing but uh, basically we want to make a human being just like God has created our human body. So, in that, in the similar fashion, we are, we as a human being, we are trying to develop a the robotic body that can completely mimic whatever task we can do. Okay, as a human being. So that is the ultimate objective of any, we can say that, the robot. So in that way, so if we are thinking about the God creation in our body, so we can think that what the materials God has taken to create. So, of course, in our body, we are having tissues, we are having bones, and uh, we can say that other, but these are the major type of material God has utilized to create our human body. So, in general, let me tell you, friend, uh, bones are also considered as a type of tissue, okay? and tissue is considered as a soft material. So, that's why we are getting the motivation from the nature that, okay, if we are trying to completely mimic the robot designed by a human being, it can mimic our body our, as a human being task, which has created by the God. That is the ultimate, or you can say that the ultimate perfect example of a robot, just like human being. So, of course, we have to shift uh, the material, whatever we are choosing to make the robot from hard to soft. So, of course, uh, you may argue that based on the requirement, uh, means we can, uh, uh, we have to see that, okay, which type of material is suitable is, uh, for a particular type of application. But if you are trying to make the humanoid robot, particularly making the complete human body task, so in that way, we have to strictly restrict ourselves in the material using in the form of soft material. So, and that is the motive uh, to take this. Actually, we have to shift from, we are shifting from the conventional robotics to the soft material based robotics that we are actually calling it soft robotics. So now, at the same time, of course, just like uh, uh, we are moving as a human being, we are eating the food. Of course, we are taking energy from the food and this energy we are utilizing to uh, do the task. So of course, if any, means whatever the task we are expecting from a machine, we have to provide some energy in. So in that way, of course, and uh, at the same time, which type of material? Uh, so of, of course, uh, energy requires because uh, uh, robots uh, is not considered as a living thing. Uh, he cannot eat the food. So of course, we have to provide some energy in the form of anything. Maybe you can say that mechanical form, electrical form, whatever. Okay, so any of the form, we have to provide energy as an input and then in that means as an output, we can uh, get some amount of uh, means output or that energy that has been applied or supplied, sorry, to the system or in, in a machine, which can be considered as a system, it can create some output in the form of perform task, in the form of maybe mechanical motion, whatever. So, uh, uh, let me tell you, basically, so which type of material we have to use? That we have understood that, okay, uh, motive from the nature, we are choosing the smart material, so we are choosing the soft material. So, we have to thank our material scientists that, uh, uh, just like our tissue, so uh, in the similar type of tissue properties, we can get the polymeric material, we can choose to make the soft material based robot. So, polymeric material we can get from the direct, directly from the nature, like uh, uh, natural rubber. Uh, we are having a tree, so directly we can import from the tree. Okay? So, that is the basic uh, polymeric material. But again, I am saying that we have to uh, thank our material scientists that we have also invented uh, the polymeric material uh, that can also be actually. Uh, uh, having they are having some additional features uh, which normal rubber or normal polymer material doesn't have 
like let me give you a very simple example that let's say we have we are having very simple polymer in the simple polymer what is what is the major things we can achieve simply when we are going to apply some load or some force so of course what we can observe that is going to deform and we are seeing the observation what is the object what we can observe simply a uh, polymer can deform so this uh, of polymer is changing the shape so basically deformation is nothing but the changing shape if we are going to apply the mechanical force now we are having a particular type of material in the, so that type of material is not means they can provide you the shape change effect not only the me applying mechanical force or we can say that just application of mechanical loading or just a simple applying forces they can also give you the shape change effect even though you have not applied the mechanical force just applying the electrical voltage um, so based on your requirement just like because every time we are utilizing the machine just we have to we want to make the machine very convenient just like you know uh, sub, uh, we want to switch on and switch on the simple uh, some uh, input whatever the uh, joystick and we want to perform the task from the machine this is our habit i yeah, mean just we are thinking of uh, the machine in that uh, 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 means very simpler way uh, we want to perform so in that way so basically smart materials so if we are talking about the smart material so smart material are nothing but the material that can give you the shape change effect even though you are not applying the mechanical force so the shape change effect you can observe you can apply by electrical voltage or sometimes some material also give you the shape change effect even though you are going to apply the magnetic field and sometimes so many other type of material also there so we are restricting our uh, means uh, discussion on the uh, material so how we are going to define in this talk the smart material so smart material that is simply distinguished from the simple polymeric material so that is uh, uh, giving you the shape change effect if you are going to apply some voltage so now let's let me give you uh, so you also you uh, to make the smart robots okay so human like robots we can say that okay so we are going to utilize these type of smart materials and of course uh, we have understood why are they needed of course uh, uh, to make the robot smart okay even more than the robot may have some features which sometimes as a human being also we cannot perform few tasks that robot can perform that difficult tasks okay so that's why these type of material are needed so now moving ahead uh, to part the uh, uh, real uh, uh, where we have seen these type of material so basically uh, the smart material uh, a very simple type of uh, smart material uh, example is uh, dielectric elastomer or dielectric material which can easily available from the uh, any uh, uh, any shop uh, any online shop shopping we can easily uh, purchase like amazon flipkart so basically how it looks like so it looks like double sided tape so double sided tape we have already seen uh, so many times we have purchased uh, for our utilizing day to day task so it looks like uh, double sided tape you can see here in the picture also okay and the manufacturing company is 3m dhb 4910 so basically this uh, a type of you know 4910 is a port uh, so it is having some part, uh, particular uh material property to support changes so some uh, material property may vary or some geometrical uh, properties may vary if this board is going to be so bhp means very high okay so this is called dielectric uh, elastomeric material so that is uh, we consider here it is a smart material so what happens so uh, as we have seen that yes uh, this material can provide you the safe change effect if you are going to apply some voltage so now <laughs> let me tell you if we are how we are making the connection now to get the shape change effect so directly we cannot connect the voltage source or whatever the voltage uh, means connection like plus and minus uh, cables directly to the uh, material okay so what we have to we have to do something uh, to make connection then we can get the shape change so now let me give you a very simple case like suppose uh, see 
whenever we are thinking about designing the human like uh, uh, robots so we are not directly actually uh, design complete robot body so we are thinking about the design of different different parts just like our human body is having different different parts like our hand our muscle our legs so many different parts are there so in that way whenever we are going to design human like robots or even though these other type of robots also so we are taking one by one part design uh, for the complete design of the machine so now uh, suppose uh, i'm giving you a simple example that uh, let's say we have taken a small uh, rectangular type of specimen uh, we have cut it from the smart material uh, we have purchased from the market let's say so how we will make the connection to get the safety net so what we have to do to make the connection we cannot directly apply the plus and minus cables okay to the material so before that what we have to do we have to make some coating coating of carbon grease so carbon grease grease we have already seen okay so directly some pictures is also there and the next uh, further uh, fabrication slides we will have a look at how it is going to looks like it so simply we are making the coating of the carbon grease upper and lower side of the material cut a space okay so basically this space are uh, these uh, 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 means uh, electrode coating is uh, actually considered as a uh you can say that uh means electrodes of the this uh, complete configuration basically this after coating the carbon grease material to the material uh, means dielectric elastomeric material this complete system uh, looks like a uh, example like an example of the capacitor so concept of the capacitor means parallel plate capacitor concept we have already heard in our uh means 11th or 12th classes so the same type of uh, configuration we are getting here so what we can do now so uh, in that electrodes so now we can uh, take a small uh, sometimes what we require some uh, copper copper metallic paper is also required in thin very thin sheet looks like paper so we can also attach small copper tape okay uh, to the uh, upper side and lower side of the uh, electrodes and then that copper tape in that voltage plus and minus cable and then we can apply the voltage we can control the voltage and based on the control of this voltage we can get safety here you can see them in the animation how so what we have done is we have made the coating and then uh, we have put it some carbon tape and we have made the connection uh, we have put it the voltage supply connection and just increasing the voltage what happens even though we have not applied any mechanical force but it is going to looks like something is there that is going to apply some pressure uh, into the thickness direction let's say so in that direction whatever whatever the we have made because so in the, what happened something pseudo force will act because we have applied this electrical voltage that is going to pressurize this thickness so it is going to reduce the thickness so what happens uh, because we already seen that uh, whenever we are shrinking the thickness what happens other dimension will get enhanced that is known as something mechanical we are calling it poison effect so that is the nature of it can observe we can do the demonstration also so sometimes uh, you can uh, sometimes you have to design some you know uh, muscle like actuators so in that way you can roll the smart material and then you can get the cylindrical configuration because our muscle looks like cylindrical in shape in that way we can design uh, cylindrical or muscle actuator for the smart so now moving ahead uh means now let's define the actuator so so till now what we have seen that how, how we have understood that what is soft robotics what is smart materials and how this smart material can be utilized to design uh, means in particular soft robotics so just like our human body uh, we are having so many parts like we are defining uh, different hands okay So in that way, soft actuator of me, soft means uh, soft robots must be having some different different parts. So we are defining these parts as an actuator. So now let's try to understand that what is a soft actuator. So to define the actuator in a very simpler way, so we can say that actuator is means this actuator is connected with the. Word called actuation. Actuation already we know. What do you mean by actuation? Means something from where we are getting the motion. Actuation means motion we are getting. So basically, actuator in simply simpler way we can define as a mover. Mover means 
something it is taking the energy it is taking the energy from any source and then providing the motion as a as an out okay so actuator in simpler way we can define actuator will require some energy inputs to convert the same into mechanical motion so basically actuator is defined in a very simple okay so actuator is, actuator is nothing but the simpler system that is taking energy from any energy um, any source of energy which may be anything but the output is restricted as a mechanical motion okay mechanical motion means shape can differ with respect to time we are observing that we have defined it as a mechanical motion please mute yourself if somebody is having uh, unmuted uh, sorry ha okay so now let me give you a very simple example how uh, what are the different type of soft actuator we can easily fabricate i mean easily uh, what are the different type of actuator we can design so very simple type of actuator based on the dielectric elastomer which we have seen in this previous slide so we can take that material simply we can cut it and cylindrical i mean in the uh, means you can say that the uh, plate configuration and then we can make the carbon grease coating and then we can make the connections okay so then if we are suppose we have additionally connected a small spring okay uh, in one side of the actuator and then we are controlling the voltage so based on that what we can uh, observe so basically we can observe this spring change effect okay so spring uh, energy of progress drip spring deformation we can observe just by controlling the voltage so basically this is also in the form of Uh, actuator is in this configuration is also considered as an actuator because we are going to apply the voltage as an input and as an output we are getting the deformation in the spring okay and coming to the uh, muscle like actuator designing how uh, we can design a muscle like actuator for the robot okay so simply as we have seen in the previous slide that we can take the sample and we can roll it in the form of Uh, uh cylindrical configuration and of course uh, we will try to make the carbon grease coating okay so what you have to do you have to first uh, take the seat in the form of plate configuration and make the uh, carbon grease coating and you can make the roll and then you can apply the voltage connection here you can see that uh, this is a small experiment we have performed that okay so initially when we have not applied voltage so the configuration here you can say that it is having some but when we have applied voltage okay so it has been uh, actuated means the deformation we can observe in the actuator just like our uh, muscle actuator is having deformation okay so when we are going to apply the voltage so uh, we are changing the uh, we can get the actuation in the cylindrical configuration and sometimes but uh, sometimes what require because it is uh, considered as a closed foam uh, uh, closed uh, volume so we can close it and sometimes we can provide a uh, pressure input as well because uh, so you may apply two different type of input means of course you are going to control the actuator uh, with respect to the electrical voltage and at the same time sometimes if required then you can also apply some uh, uh, means a pre pressure as well okay so but uh, let me tell you whenever we require small tuning see you can apply the pressure as well but whenever in some particular application you require small fine tuning so you cannot control uh, uh, that you cannot achieve that fine tuning with applying uh, uh, pressure control in that way uh, you can get the fine tuning only with the application of electrical voltage Now moving ahead, uh, there are so many other advanced uh, type of you know application of uh, making soft actuator. Like if some person is having disability that he cannot grip properly a glass of water, so in that way you can design you know some uh, 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 soft gripper. Okay, so in that way he can easily actually uh, put the uh, 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 means gripper in in their hand, and then he can easily. do the basic uh, task whatever he required in day to day life and sometimes let me tell you okay so in some of the materials of course i told you that uh, you can apply the voltage and at the same times in some of the application you can apply the air pressure as well. so uh, this is some of the uh, application taken from the nasa okay so 
basically their people are also utilizing air supply at the same time voltage kind to get the crumble type of motion uh, looks like you can say that the spider uh, looks like a spider so this type of actuator we can actually uh, fabricate uh, utilizing the soft materials so this is a kind of muscle actuator that you can see here this is the uh, part simple type of configuration but uh, in same type of cylindrical configuration we have wrapped the nylon threading so basically if you are not providing the nylon threading we can get the actuation only in the let's say that the um, form of tensile mode we cannot we cannot get the actuation in the form of contraction so to get the contraction form of the actuation we have to actually make the nylon braid is so a simple uh, candidate cylindrical configuration so you can apply uh, the nylon braiding and that uh, using that nylon braid you can now able to achieve the contraction type of actuator so basically this type of actuator is designed by mac so that's why sometimes we are uh, means people are calling it macbin type muscle actuator so this is the picture uh, now moving ahead uh, towards the next uh, type of uh, actuator designing so there are so many application where you require uh, this designing of soft actuator so you can utilize uh, directly a uh, simple type of natural rubber so natural rubber what is the distinction between simple rubber and smart rubber so simple rubber is not going to apply the, I mean, is not provide you the actuator with the application of the electrical board simple rubber will give you the actuator only when you will apply the mechanical force or with the application of the uh, air supply sometimes we can provide the air pump but if you are providing the smart type of material like dielectric elastomer so you must be and uh, means enhancing the control uh, ability means you can either apply mechanical pressure either you can apply the based on the requirement so here you can say that this is a type of muscle actuator we can, uh, we have uh, means people can design uh to uh, mimic the human uh, muscle uh, so there are n number of possible applications so now let me tell you a few limitation also we are have okay of course uh, soft actuator whenever we think so some limitation we can also have so of course as we know that whenever we are uh, actually getting some output from any machine so there is a particular threshold so if we are actually uh, uh, putting that um, if we are actually uh, moving to that threshold so basically we may appear uh, means fault in that so in the similar category there is a particular limit of the voltage uh, up to that level you can get actuation okay so if you are crossing that limit and your whatever the material will try to is bust actually you can say that will actually uh, it is not going to perform the task or it will going to means uh, break uh, the actuator okay so how will you know that you are trying to actually get uh, you are moving uh, towards that uh, limit so there is a small uh, signal you can uh, actually get the appearance from that type of actuator whenever we are increasing the voltage slowly slowly so when you will start getting these type of ring feeling these type of materials okay so you have to stop there because if you are not stopping further you are going to increase the voltage then a uh, breakdown will happen okay so means that material will blast like uh, you have to control the air pumping if you are let me give you a very simple example that suppose you are pumping the air towards the balloon means into the balloon and there is certain threshold up to that level you can apply the air if you are enhancing the air volume so that is going to blast in the similar fashion so this type of signal you may uh, get so you have to stop now moving towards the uh, now let me give you the simple example sometimes this type of material can also be uh, actually uh, uh, utilized uh, to generate uh, means to generate the some amount of electricity or whatever can also be utilized in the form of generator so we can develop the actuator at the same time we can also develop the uh, means uh, generator so generator is basically actuator means getting from energy by supplying some energy we are getting some motion mechanical motion that is called actuator 
and how we are defining the generator basically generator is defined as the reverse of the actuator reverse of the actuator means we can apply mechanical motion as an input and we can get the energy as an output so particularly we are restricting ourselves output energy in the form of electricity okay so we are defining it as a generator so generator is nothing but the supplying we are supplying the mechanical motion and utilizing that mechanical motion to harvest some kind of electric that is called generator so whatever the dielectric material or smart material we have uh, talked about that can also be uh, actually uh, utilized to make the generator So let me give you a very simple situation that okay so how in means uh, how we can actually make the simple system uh, to extract some amount of or to harvest some amount of electrical energy so let me give you a very simple example let's say uh, uh, we are walking uh, uh, in in a morning in the garden or somewhere places okay so while walking we are having a full amount of mechanical energy in our body that mechanical energy can be utilized okay in the form of harvesting of energy electrical energy you can say that so let's do basic calculation okay general calculation how at what level of uh, energy uh, range we can harvest while walking let's do a small average let's take uh, while walking uh, let's say a human body is having average weight 70 kg okay so let's say 70 times let's say g is 10 even though exact value is 9.81 but let's say for small calculation or uh, so we are taking g as a 10 so while walking we are applying this force 700 newton uh, to the so you can say that to the eye. that uh, mechanical force can be utilized so basically to to so we have put it some smart material based configuration so now what we are doing we are in the previous uh, uh, type of actuator niche type of configuration when we have designed the actuator so what we have done so we have made a uh, system so we are providing the voltage and we are getting the uh, con uh, means uh, change in shape so in the in the change in shape we are getting the mechanical performance and now reverse the situation we are now going to provide the mechanical force and using that mechanical deformation we are extracting some amount of electrical energy so we have applied let's say while walking 700 newton uh, force mechanical force and to the configured system made of dielectric elastomer okay so how much the range or we can say let's do calculation the what is the mechanical energy uh, we are having now we have applied the 700 newton so while walking in the run, okay so we are moving one step so let's say in one step average distance we can say the 0.01 meter we are moving while walking as a human being so we are having we have applied we are having to harvest nearly 7 joule of uh, mechanical energy okay so let's say our system is not 100% efficient okay so some amount of energy that is available that can be harvested in the form of electricity like 7 So now let's think about what is the uh, range of the uh, power required for mobile link charging. So that range is uh, in general 2 watt to 5. Okay. So let's say even though our system is having 50% efficiency, so at least uh, in that range we can pass. Okay. So of course, so we can means while walking, utilizing these type of the um, smart material based generator, we can harvest some amount of energy that can also be that can. we utilize to charge your mobile and also sometimes uh, uh, means uh, uh, cbi people or something security persons they are also utilizing these type of mechanical energy to actually power out some body sensors okay so some uh, people are also security person they are utilizing these type of uh, sensors so similar type of example a similar situation also we can uh, make uh, in our campus also so this is small idea people can also harvest at least some amount of energy uh, to let me give you a very simple example i'm not going to again uh, discuss it but providing you the situation that okay so e as a means everybody have seen the toll okay so in the toll in general uh, means so many vehicles are coming 
and going okay so lots of means you can say that uh, heavy vehicle also coming okay so that heavy vehicle type of motion can also be utilized okay that mechanical motion can be utilized at least to ignite whatever the toll light we are okay so in that way we can think i'm not going to discuss into detail i hope so you have got i'm trying to say that because we have already seen one simple example of the bucket so now moving to the second uh, objective of this talk uh, uh, so till now we have talked about the uh, we can say that we have discussed about the soft robotics or what is the soft equipment what is generator okay and what are the smart materials now how we can fabricate suppose i have given you some uh, so many things what you require to generate uh, to uh, fabricate the soft actuator okay so how will you fabricate how will you perform the task so we are talk talking about now fabrication of a basic soft actuator so i will give you some small very simplest type of step by step procedure okay so we can easily understand so of course let's say our objective is to design simple uh, we can say that uh, a uh, simple uh, dielectric elastomeric material based soft actuator okay so the first thing foremost things are required to be purchased from the market the first one is the dielectric elastomer itself okay uh, and the second one is a requirement of the acrylic sheet because sometimes we require to make out the framing just like uh, god has created our body okay they have used the uramis god has taken the tissues and to make the framing okay so bone has been actually uh, is first they have made the frame then we have uramis uh, god has actually put the tissues inside our body so to make the framing we requires acrylic okay so that is coming in the form of plastic or sometimes we can say that hard material not a specific hard but of course we have to uh, put this uh, acrylic sheet into the hard material But just we are utilizing to make the frame. So this is your grease uh, uh, tube. Okay, so looks like a uh, uh, toothpaste tube. Okay, so inside it carbon grease is there, so we can utilize. As we have seen that, okay, while making the circuit circuitry to uh, make the actuator, we have to put this carbon grease. And of course, after making the carbon grease, so we require copper tape because we will attach this copper tape to the uh, layer of the soft actuator. Then uh, one side and another side, this copper tape is connected with the wiring plus and minus side. Okay. So now, uh, suppose we have purchased these all the things uh, from the market, and of course, uh, to make out the uh, actuator, you require some. basic needs uh, basic uh, uh, tools like scissor cotton swells plastic cup and of course gloves because carbon is uh, can <laughs> okay so uh, not hard your hand but just be better to glove uh, gloves while using uh, while working on the actuator fabrication okay so of course uh, you require voltage source to supply the power okay? and sometimes it is also required to actually amplify the voltage okay so you sometimes require high voltage amplifier also so suppose these are the means uh, tools required to fabricate the soft actuator so that we have seen so now so let's say we have arranged all the things then uh, let's say how and let me give you say, uh, tell you that uh, just uh, we have discussed that okay uh, there is a threshold up to that limit we can apply the voltage so uh, wrinkle sometimes may be may we may observe okay whenever we are increasing the voltage so uh, researchers has seen that okay how we can avoid this or how we can delay this wrinkling type of unwanted phenomena so to actually delay that wrinkling uh, uh, means uh, type of unwanted phenomena we have to pre stretch the material okay pre stretch means just uh, before operating what we are doing we are taking the material and we are pre stretching pre stretching means just we are extending the uh, material and then we are making the frame and uh, that pre stretched frame we have made uh, we have put it on the uh, means uh, frame whatever let's say frame we are making the circular type of actuator let's say okay so we have pre stretched the material to avoid or to delay the wrinkling type of unwanted phenomena and that pre stretched material membrane we have put it into the frame whatever we have 
created let's say circular okay we are trying to make the circular type of actuator and later on we have to make the carbon gauge coating okay so we have made put it the carbon gauge coating upper and lower side and then so we have connected the copper tip okay very thin sheet of the tip of copper okay looks like very you know paper sheet okay so we have connected here and then this connection means whatever the power source you are having you can just connect with this copper tip one side and the other side so let me give you uh, some bolt uh, actually uh, how whenever we are going to apply some voltage okay, so how will the actuator will deform so let me uh, show you the small demonstration how it is going to looks like it and you will apply the bolt so i think uh, my screen is here to all right yes sir yes sir okay please have a look how we are getting the actuation whenever we are switch on voltage we are going to switch on the voltage okay so these type of actuation we are getting and so this is, let me uh, remove because all the things we have already seen so we have put it the carbon gauge coating okay and then what is happening basically ah so please have a look so this is the pre stretch uh, dielectric elastomer so let's say we have made the circular uh, frame and so we are going to put it in the frame and then we will put carbon gauge coating copper tape has been attached you can apply the voltage now you can control the voltage from the uh, power generator sorry function generator this type of actuation you can also yeah so this type of uh, wrinkling sometimes you may have here so you have to stop here if you are further increasing the voltage then it will going to burst out yeah this is called dielectric breakdown the difference tape you can also make it based on your uh, requirement of the uh, means whatever the actuator you are going to design now let's say we are going to design a flapping wings sir so we are see uh, what are the things required sir uh, we are unable to see your simulation sir your presentation is visible to us but okay okay wait 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 okay 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 okay, okay, okay. Wait, actually the screen is uh, your ppt presentation is visible to us oh, okay okay fine 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 understood actually yeah uh, i forgot to share that now it is okay ha yes sir now it's okay sir. okay sorry so now let's okay so let's say we are going to make the flapping wing actuator दो दिनों की बारी थी पर ऐसे देखो आप yeah this is your circular actuator so based on your requirement you can uh, design uh, the different type of actuator muscle actuator okay so uh, basically whatever in the talk we have discussed we have discussed in general we have seen the fabrication part so whatever the is actuator we have designed all the actuator can also be actually model 
uh, as a theoretical uh, calculation, but we have not gone through. Okay, so all the means uh, like at what voltage, and how much actuation you can achieve, at what application of pressure limit you can get, how much actuation. If you are going to design any muscle actuator uh, for a humanoid robot, so what will be the applied voltage and uh, means uh, electrical electrical voltage and the limit of the air pressure? Okay, how much? Based on the requirement of the actuation. And do this all the calculation. So this calculation includes the understanding about the continuum mechanics. So that we are uh, because of the short uh, time discussion. So just we have gone through the introductory session. Okay. So uh, if in the future we are having uh, uh, time, so we can also go through this uh, uh, theoretical uh, modeling aspect for whatever we have discussed till now. Uh, in the soft actuator. So thank you, uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, and all the things already I have uh, explained. So uh, let me. I think the screen is shared. Uh, that, that voltage. Uh, sorry, uh, video screen is shared or some uh, other. Sir, uh, uh, Zoom okay. Is, okay. I mean, now it's okay. Yeah, PPT came, right? Yes, sir. PPT we can see. Sir. Okay, so whatever the means uh, uh, videos we have seen that so all so these type of facility already. Um, we have established here at NIT Bhopal. Okay, so I would like to welcome the students if you want to uh, work uh, or if you want to apply this type of you know uh, facility. So you are highly welcome to NIT Bhopal. Okay, so our uh, soft robotics lab we have established here at NIT Bhopal. So these are a few glimpses of our uh, uh, lab. Okay. So some of the students also develop some uh, gripper kind of you know. Uh, 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 actuator so sometimes the application there are a huge number of application to uh, design some soft gripper so thank you thank you sir uh, for inviting me uh, for um, giving me opportunity uh, to uh, discuss my research area to uh, the audience thank you so up to you sir. thank you sir for this insightful presentation uh, now the house and is yes, open uh, for